In this video, I will cover a topic that people seem to have a lot of questions with, and um, I think I'm going to provide you with a common sense approach to this. If there are any engineers watching this and they want to chime in, feel free to leave a comment in the comment area. But for the most part, all exterior walls are considered to be load-bearing, with a general exception that is rarely mentioned that there will be some cases where you're going to have more weight transferred to one wall than another wall. And that's kind of what I want to go over in this video here. So let's go ahead and start with a garage here. We have a beam that is supporting the load and then transferring it to both sides down to the foundation. And then here we have a gable wall where it is only supporting maybe this section of the roof it's not supporting all of this like this wall here would be doing so if anyone was taking a common sense uh, approach to this this area here would have a lot more weight transferring to it than this area here so even though this is considered a load-bearing wall it does not mean it's going to carry the same load and that's the point i want to make in this video you can simply look at a roof and say, okay, wait a minute, uh, I can see here where there's more weight being distributed to this area than there is to this area or this area. It is that simple. You can stop watching the video right here if uh, that's all you're looking for, but I am going to go over two more roofs, two more different types of roofs with the same floor plan. So again, this right here is load bearing, but it's only going to be transferring the load from this area you know maybe one rafter back kind of a thing that's it it's not going to be the same as this and you are going to have in conventionally framed um, roofs you're going to have supporting braces that will be taking some of the weight off of the roof also now the only difference i can think of between an engineered roof truss system and a conventionally framed roof especially for this type of floor plan here will be the fact that you will not have any interior bracing you won't have any roof purlins you won't have anything to um, any studs that are transferring weight from the ridge down to the wall framing down to the foundation so no center support system all of the weight for a roof truss like this one here is going to be transferred to the exterior load bearing points or i should say the roof truss load bearing points not necessarily always going to be the exterior because over here we have a wall dividing the garage and the house and that is the load bearing wall now as far as the gable roof goes this side it's basically the same as a conventionally framed roof roof uh, system a lot of people think that uh, since this is a roof truss the gable end that they could actually remove wall studs that isn't going to be the case and I'm not suggesting that you don't have a roof truss that is built that way. All I'm saying is I have never seen one. These are just simply boards that are fastened together to be used in the same way as if you used uh, gable studs to fill this area underneath a rafter. The weight of this transfers down. It does not transfer to the... Um, on a roof truss like this, it's not going to transfer down to the load bearing points. The weight that's right here is going to transfer straight down. Hope that makes sense. So again, exterior wall with rafter tail sticking out. Yes, probably load bearing. If you come to a, uh, a section like this where you don't have any rafter tails, but you can uh, see that they're sitting on top of the wall framing then this is probably the load bearing point rafter tails on the other side another clue that that's the load bearing wall or, or a wall that's going to have more weight now something else you should consider would be any areas like this where you have fill sections of the roof that are sitting on top of the uh of, of an existing roof and uh, or a different section of the roof you know again common sense there's going to be more weight transferred in this area here than there is going to be on the other side of the roof so something else to consider now we're using this same floor plan the only difference here is that we now have a hip roof if you have a hip roof 
then it kind of makes sense that all of the exterior walls are going to have a lot of weight or weight from the roof distributed down. There is not going to be a gable end that you can say, wait a minute, there's not going to be a lot of weight on that. Roof rafters sitting on top of the exterior wall should give you a pretty good clue that this is going to have a little more weight on it than the same wall if it had a gable end on it. So again, you're going to have on a conventionally framed roof like this or a hip roof, you're going to have the roof purlins, what we have here, and then some support studs to help with the ridge. And again, here's the support stud transferring the load down to the wall. Another view of it there. This one's not that hard to figure out when it comes to a load-bearing wall. If a roof rafter is sitting on top of the wall, then it's probably going to have a little more weight being transferred to that wall than if it's a gable end wall that uh, is only holding up the stucco and a small section of the roof.